Hey everybody, Ben here from Art Less Ordinary. So, tonight I'm going to do a pour, but before I do, this dried overnight. It's dry enough so I can touch it. Really, really happy. I don't think it changed much more from when we last saw it, but it's dried smooth, there's no bumps. So often when you get cells in artwork, you get little little dibbits and um, it, it just doesn't look as smooth. When this looks completely smooth, I don't know how you guys can see, but it virtually it's flawless. It's just got these cells in there, but it doesn't show on the actual canvas. So I am super, super thrilled. So I need to get this out of the way, but I gotta take my little pins out the bottom because they, are a little bit wet still on the base and I don't want to get that on anything now I put this aside to to cure even more but um yeah so that's the way I feel it should be but this is really cool so just keeping my eye on a giant spider it has crept its way into my art room and when I say a giant spider He's bigger than this cup, <laughs> so I'm keeping my eye on him. I'm not scared of spiders, but um, he's got some decent fangs on him, this one, so I'm a little bit worried if he gets too close. Okay, so tonight I'm going to do a pearl pour with two extreme sheens, silver and copper. So normally I do silver and a colour, but I thought, why don't I do two color, um, a silver and a copper? Because I think they might look all right. And sometimes it's hard to know when I haven't used colors how exactly they're going to look. So I have mixed up 20 grams of paint and 20 grams of Floetrol for both the silver and the copper. So they've been sitting for about an hour now. They're... The consistency is not too bad for these. Some of them you've got to be careful of. When you pick two extreme sheens, if you find one more runnier than the other, adjust your flow troll accordingly to the thicker one. So do the thicker one one to one, and the thinner one you may only ha use half the amount of flow troll to paint. So these are already made up. They've been settling down for about an hour. So I just give them a good stir, get the um, mica or whatever you call it in there running again smoothly and then I've just got Montmartre black which is normally I do this one part paint two parts flow troll but I found it a little bit thick so I added a little bit more flow troll to it so it's probably one part paint two and a quarter flow troll so I want to put about a third in the cup and I'm going to go half of the copper and then half the silver and pour it from a height so it sinks down. Then I'm going to put in another third of this black. Then we get this ready, pour it from a height. And I'm going to pour, this time I poured the copper over the side which I put the silver. Because I kind of want them to blend a little bit without mixing too much. But I want there to not just be one solid side copper and one solid side silver. And now we pour the silver one over the side that I put the first lot of copper. So this is a pretty simple pour. Um, well, it looks like some of the paint started drying. Hope that didn't leave a lump. And then we're going to pour the rest of the black, but I want to try and cover up that metallic sitting on top a little bit. Now, if there's any left, 
I'm just going to scrape a tiny bit onto the corners and just cover them roughly. And I say, when I say roughly, I mean like pretty roughly. It doesn't really have to matter. You don't even have to do this. I do just find it helps that little bit just in case you don't get all the way over the edges. Oh no. So the spider was sitting on my open window and I was hoping he was going to go and find the little gap that he crawled in through the fly screen and go back outside. No, he's decided to climb around on the walls in my room now. I'm just spreading this out so it's not a clump. So I'm not going to get the camera and show you the spider because he's going to scare everybody, I think. So judging by the look of him, he would be about that big. So it's what we call a huntsman here in Australia. Um, he's, well, when I say harmless, he's relatively harmless. He does have big fangs, so he can give you a decent bite, but um, he's not going to unless I try to poke around and try to catch him. Just going to let him do his thing and hope I don't dream spiders getting me. So this is done. This is paint's ready. I'm going to pour it from a height. I want it to sink down and go into itself. I don't want it just sitting on top. I want the, the color to go deep down. So when I say height, it doesn't have to be like in the sky high, but we wanted a relative high, and it, I actually don't find it matters how fast you pour the paint out. It's just a matter of trying to get most of it to sink. So this last little bit that comes out the cup, if there's any silver or copper in it, it will not sink because it's it's not high, it's not heavy enough. So this part will sit on top and we'll leave a pattern instead of making pearls. So if you can see this at the moment, there's lots of this that's sunk underneath and it's starting to come up as a pearl when that bit there is sitting on top. So that's absolutely fine. It just gives you a slightly different effect and I prefer only to have a little bit of it, not a lot. Get our blow torch out. And pop. Oh, it's going crazy again. Pop all these bubbles. And in case you're wondering, I have been using Floetrol a little bit more than using glue mixtures. Um, I don't mind the glue mixtures, but I, with the types of pores that I've been doing, they kind of require the Floetrol. So that's why I've been using it a little bit more. Um, oh goodness. Sorry. <laughs> the spider's freaking me out a little bit. I, don't, I don't really don't mind spiders. Normally I would catch them and put them in my hands and, you know. But he's extremely big. And, yeah. I might be a little bit intimidated by him. Alright, so this is doing its thing. It's kind of um, giving me some effects. So I'm just going to pour it to the sides without going over. Just to try to stretch it out a little bit. And if you want to, you could cover most of the canvas in the black, if that's what you desire to do. Um, I just did the corners because I think I had excess paint. Uh, 
Okay. So there's the four corners done. I'm just when I give it a shake, it just levels it out a little bit. Okay. I'm. Mm. Sorry, it's hard for me to watch this and watch the spider. So when you got cool effects inside your cup, I don't know if you can see that, then it usually means you're going to get cool effects on your canvas too. All right, where's he gone? Excellent. Okay. He went back in between the glass and the flywire, so I closed the window. So now he's out there. <laughs> no need to worry. Now, I'm going to put my corner catcher on. And whereabouts is my paint? It's in the middle. So we are going to go up to this corner first. I seem to always do the same corners first. Um, I am a creature of habit. So it's in the corner. Come back a little bit. Take the catcher off. And then bring the paint back down to the middle. Now we want to go off to this side. So you always want to bring the paint back into the middle. So in the corner we go. Come out of the corner, take the catcher off. So the reason why you pull it back is because if you take the catcher off too early, then a lot of it drips off. So if you make it go back a little bit and then take the catcher off, it holds everything in place a little bit better. Bring the paint back to the center. And then we go down to this corner. Into the corner we go, whoops, back a bit, take the corner catcher off. Bring the paint back to the center. Definitely has thickened up a little bit more than I normally use. It's just the hot weather. And into this corner we go, and up there. Take the corner catcher off. Now, don't take it over your canvas, always take it around the edges. So did that go over? Not fully. That will now, it will drag itself over. So we're just gonna check our four corners and make sure that they do have paint on them because sometimes the corner catcher just prevents it a little bit now bring the weight of the paint back towards the center I'm not going to have a lot of movement here give it a little wobble now if there's any part you don't want and you want to pour off like normal do that now I don't really think I want to pour any off. I just want to move it around a little bit. But watch your pattern, it will alter. Your cells can go really out of shape if you stretch it too much. Like I think um, I may be stretching it too much that way. We'll see if we can move it this way a bit. Yeah, the weight of the paint is pulling one part of the picture and not the other. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to do too much more stretching. So I'm gonna leave that. I'm just gonna run my fingers to stop those drips. Okay, it's quite nice with the copper and the silver. I haven't actually used those two in one of these pores before. Now, I am getting more um, pearls come up in different sections, 
seem to be getting more gold coming up over here. I've got, a, I mean, copper. I've got a couple coming up over here, but not many. So you know how I wanted to pour, you know how I poured the silver and the gold the first ones I put in either side of the cup and then the second time I put it on top of the other. So that's giving this kind of natural effect where it's blending. The one spot where it looks like it hasn't blended is mostly through here. So there may be some copper underneath, but not a lot. But I am going to give it another quick little torch. I can just see, because it's thick, I can see far too many air bubbles. Alrighty, that's good. That's the gone. Now, you don't have to torch. Um, you're best to torch the first time or use something to get rid of the air bubbles, but the second time you don't. I just do it because I can see the air bubbles in there and I don't know. I'm a little bit pedantic at times and they annoy me. Alrighty, so our best bet is to pause this, let it evolve, um, see if more pearls come up and then come back to it. So the silver is strong in some parts like here and down there and the copper is strong in the centre and probably up over here where the pearls are coming up. And down through here, it's really nice blend of both. They kind of look very, um, like rock colours because they've got the gold and the silver. It's really cool. So we're going to pause it and we will come back soon. Okay, so there we go. It's been seven minutes. Um, the pearls have kind of just growing a little bit. So over here and over there, the copper pearls have kind of um, just swollen a little bit and a couple of little tiny speckle pearls have come through. Little couple of little speckle silver pearls are in here and there was only two copper over here. Now there's a, there's a few more little ones, but um, it's probably not going to change too much more. But I do like this. It feels very um, earthy. In, in my eyes, the, the colours seem quite earthy. The silver kind of just makes it pop a little bit. And the copper just gives it um, a nice earth tones. So, mostly across the bottom, it is blended and given me like larger, um, non-uniform shaped pearls or kind of just swirls of colour. Same with over the sides. But through here, definitely have got pearls come up. So this is pretty cool. And this section here is what I was talking about. That little bit there is the bit that was poured out of the cup that didn't sink. So it sat on top. So there's not really any pearls in there because it sits on top instead of going underneath. But when it goes underneath and comes back up, you get these kind of more um, defined rings or shapes when that there is kind of just a big area but it still looks cool it doesn't actually distract too much from the artwork so i like this i'm really happy with these colors um they're going to be really nice and shimmery once it's dried um, especially when it's varnished as well after it's dried you give it a good varnish and that will come up really beautiful so we will come down and have some close-ups okay so this is what i see you partly got my reflect there, that's better. Partly got my reflection in there. So sometimes the camera makes it a bit darker when I did that and it focused more and lit up this area here. And you always get my reflection in there too, so it looks a little bit different when I'm not reflecting that. Yeah. So here's the main solid um, copper and silver area. And then we go off to the side and see how these ones here are very blended. They're very copper and silver together. That's where I poured it on top. We've got these copper pearls that have come up all by themselves. And all up along this area here with some silver in the background. Sorry about my reflection. reflection. Then this side's mostly silver with a few pearls, um, copper come up. 
Then we go back down, mostly silver, and then it goes back into copper. Then we got the blend again down the bottom. And it has trouble focusing with flow troll and with metallics at times. But as you can see, really, really cool blends of colors. And then we've got solid colors in here. So you do get really cool effects. So this is copper and silver Deco Art um, Extreme Sheen Pearl Pour. So I hope you like it. Um, I like it. I think I'm quite quite satisfied with this one. I just got to make sure no bugs get in there. And I've got that spider locked outside. Well, normally I open up my window to cool the house down for the night. But I won't be doing that tonight. <laughs> He's not coming back in. <laughs> so... I hope you had fun watching this, and yeah, uh, if you want to do something similar, that would be cool, Just and let me know what you've done, so I can actually have a look. So, like, comment, share the video, and subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you to everyone who has subscribed, I'm super thrilled, I really appreciate everyone, and I love all the comments, I'm trying to get to them, um... Yeah, I have been really busy, and I don't know if I'm going to be doing a pour the next couple of days. We'll see how I go. I've got three days that are over 40 degrees in, in a row. Um, today was 38, then I've got a 41, 41, and a 40. So Christmas Day is 40 for me. So that'll be fun, and um, we'll just see how I go, whether I do an artwork or not. But have fun, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.